In this video we consider the augmented Dickey Fuller unit root test in an ARP model. So we will illustrate the idea of the augmented Dickey Fuller test using an AR3 model but we will generalize the result to an ARP model. So the AR3 model is given by yt equal to theta1 yt minus 1 plus theta2 yt minus 2 plus theta3 y t minus 3 plus epsilon t. We have a characteristic polynomium theta of L where L is the lag operator which is given by 1 minus theta 1 L minus theta 2 L squared minus theta 3 L to the power 3. So a unit root means that the characteristic polynomium evaluated in 1 is equal to 0, which is the same as 1 minus theta 1 minus theta 2 minus theta 3 is equal to 0. This is a restriction that involves all three parameters and in general we do not want to test this restriction on all three parameters at once. We'd rather want to form, reformulate the model here so that we can perform the test for a unit root based on a single coefficient. So that's what we will do now. We start with the model here. So the first thing we do is we simply rewrite the model in the following way. Subtract yt from both sides so that on the left hand side we get the change in yt and then we get theta1 minus 1 yt minus 1 plus theta2 yt minus 2 plus theta3 yt minus 3 plus epsilon t. We want to derive a representation where we only have the lag level and then we have a set of lagged first differences. And the first thing we do is we add and subtract to this equation theta 3 multiplied by yt minus 2. And then we rewrite the model theta 1 minus 1 yt minus 1 theta 2 plus theta 3 yt minus 2 theta 3 yt minus 3 and then we have minus theta 3 yt minus 2. So we put the minus in front and we get minus theta 3 yt minus 2 minus yt minus 3 finally plus epsilon t. The next thing we do is add and subtract theta 2 plus theta 3 yt minus 1. That gives us the following theta 1 plus this new term we've added theta 2 plus theta 3 minus 1 yt minus 1 and then we have an expression here and here which we can write as minus theta 2 plus theta 3 t minus 1 minus y t minus 2 and then we have the expression from before minus theta 3 y t minus 2 minus y t minus 3 plus epsilon t. Expression here the sum of the ultra aggressive coefficient minus 1 and we define that as pi. Then we have an expression here minus theta 2 plus theta 3 which we could define as c1, which is the coefficient to the first difference of yt minus 1. And finally, minus theta 3, define that as c2. What we have here is the first difference of yt minus 2. So based on these definitions, we can rewrite the model as change in yt equal to pi t minus 1 plus c1 delta yt minus 1 plus c2 delta y t minus 2 plus epsilon t. Note that this is the same model as before but written in a different representation. So we have a new set of parameters but we know exactly how the parameters of the original AR3 model are linked to the representation we have here. We had a unit root in the original model if 1 minus theta 1 minus theta 2 minus theta 3 is equal to 0. So minus pi is equal to 0 or equivalently pi is equal to 0. And this is exactly what we want to test. Note that this equation and this model we have here could easily be extended to include more lags than 3 then we would start with an ARP model. We would rewrite it exactly the same way so that we have the left hand side the change in yt then we have the lag level with a coefficient of pi and then we have p minus 1 lag first differences. Now we have everything we need to do the 
augmented Dickey Fuller test. So the test is a test of the null hypothesis of a unit root, which is the same as pi equal to zero. And we can test that against the one sided alternative that pi falls in the stationary region, which means that it falls between minus two and zero, not including minus two and zero. The test statistic is given by tau for pi equals zero hat, that's the estimated test statistics, and it's just equal to the usual t-test, which is the estimate of pi divided by the standard error of pi hat. And note that this test statistics here is usually reported by all the standard uh, econometric softwares as the t-test on the coefficient pi. Under the null, this follows a Dickey-Fuller distribution. And here we have a small plot of the Dickey Fuller distribution, the blue distribution. Note that compared to the standard normal distribution, it's moved a bit to the left. Also, note that if we include a constant term or trend in the model that would change the Dickey Fuller distribution, it would move it more to the left. We have the quantile of the various distributions. Note that we do a one sided test, so the Dickey Fuller distribution has a 5% a critical value of minus 1.94. Note the change here if we include a constant and if we include a trend as well. A few comments. First, only test of pi equals zero follows a Dickey Fuller distribution under the null. By contrast, tests on the coefficients c1 and c2 are standard normal. And the reason for this is that the test for pi equals zero imposes a unit root on the process and that's why we get this non-standard distribution. While test on c1 and c2, for example the test that c1 is equal to zero, does not impose a unit root. Second thing, which is a consequence of this, we can use normal tools to determine the light length. Sample, we could use a general to specific modeling principle. So we start with enough lags to get rid of autocorrelation and get a well specified model. Alternatively, we can use the information criteria to decide. A final comment some authors suggest to use or to calculate the augmented Dickey Fuller test for all possible lag lengths, say. 1 lag, 2 lags, 3 lags, 4 lags, 5 lags, and so on, as a robustness check. However, that is not as clever as it sounds. One problem is that if we have too few lags, we have autocorrelation by construction, and the DF, the Dickey Fuller distribution, is no longer valid. On the other hand, if we include too many lags, the parameters are imprecisely estimated, which will also deteriorate the test. So it's a better idea to first figure out what is the model, try to get the correct lag length, try to get a well-specified model, and then do the test in that one model. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching.